In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can actually set the Sony A1 up to capture 30 frames per second, and then we'll dive into what is the most that you can get out of flash, what are the various factors that limit you there. I recently did a shoot where I was freezing water as it hit the subject, and in that shoot, I walked into it thinking, I can shoot at 30 frames per second. I have all the gear necessary to shoot at 30 frames per second. When the time came to shoot and I started reviewing the files, I realized I was not anywhere near 30 frames per second. So it turns out that there's actually quite a few prerequisites to shoot 30 frames per second using the Sony A1, and then it gets even more complicated when you try to mix flash. Number one, you have to be an electronic shutter. You cannot do this using the mechanical shutter. I think the limit there is like 10 frames per second. You do not have to be in silent mode. You can keep the sound on or off. It doesn't matter. In fact, it's a little bit more satisfying to do it with the sound on. Second, you have to be in the H plus drive mode. Third, this one threw me for a loop. You have to have a compatible lens. I did not know this. Some of those lenses do it on release. Some of them require a firmware update. So make sure to check up on that if you're trying this out. Four, you have to be either shooting in JPEG, HIF, or you have to be in compressed RAW. You cannot do this in the uncompressed RAW. If you're trying to use autofocus at the same time, you need to go into your autofocus menu. You need to go to priority set in AFC and you need to change that from balanced emphasis to release so that the autofocus system knows that it can release the focus, not worry about re-enabling focus and instead just focus on delivering max FPS. The final thing is you need to be shooting between 1 250th of a second and the max of 1 32,000th of a second on that electronic shutter. When you have all of that set, you will get the glorious 30 frames per second. However, as soon as you go to use flash, at least a third party system, such as Godox lighting, you will notice that this creates some issues because as soon as you turn on your flash, your camera will most likely go back to 1 200th of a second. If you recall, one of the requirements is to be at 1 250th or higher. The sync speed limit of the Sony A1 in its electronic shutter for flash, remember this is one of the few cameras that you can actually use electronic shutter and flash together, is 1 200th of a second. But the requirement is 1 250th of a second or faster. Now you can go over 1 200th of a second on the electronic shutter. It just means you have to use high speed sync. Then we can actually increase the shutter up to 1 250th of a second. And surely that means we are now capable of triggering a flash at 30 frames per second, right? Even with my flash off right now, but just the transmitter on, the Sony all of a sudden decides that it doesn't want to do it. As soon as you enable the high speed sync on the transmitter, all of a sudden your 30 frames per second is turned off because it thinks the system thinks that it is triggering a external flash. What happens if we go down to 1 200th of a second and we just try to get the max frames per second without high speed sync? Again, here's 1 250th of a second. And here's 1 200th of a second. You can hear that 1 200th of a second is clearly quicker, but it's still not quite 30 frames per second. So it turns out that, at least when you're using the Godox X-Series flash system on the Sony A1, if you do 1 250th of a second, you will get around 9, 10 frames per second. If you go down to 1 200th of a second and you are turning off high speed sync, you will get 14 frames per second. And that is the most that you can possibly do with this setup. Even though the camera can do more, and even though I have a flash system that can do more than uh, 15 frames per second, for whatever reason, this is where it caps out. What if we instead take this trigger off and we use a single pin trigger that does not connect to the additional shoe contacts. And so now the camera will have zero idea that there is an external flash system connected. So this is a Flashpoint single pin transmitter and it's connected to my P2400 system. You can see if I hit the test button, it fires, but now the camera just doesn't trigger it. Now, if I turn the electronic shutter off and I flip back to the mechanical shutter and use a single pin transmitter, absolutely no problem. So obviously the Sony A1 is still sending a fire signal to this transmitter, 
but unfortunately it seems that the Sony A1 will disable that if you're in electronic shutter mode. Now, I've also seen examples online of people actually triggering flash at 30 frames per second with the Sony Speedlight. So unfortunately, that is over the wireless system. Now, I don't know if this is like a hardware limitation, right? That it's almost impossible to send maybe over 15 frames per second through the actual physical contacts of the hot shoe, or if this is simply a way that Sony is kind of nerfing the camera so that their system works with flash or certain systems, flash can go at the max frames per second, but other systems cannot. So in short, if you are trying to achieve max frames per second with flash, flash on the Sony A1. The most you're going to get over 1 to 50th of a second is unfortunately only about 10 frames per second. The most you'll get at 1 to 100th of a second is 14 frames per second. But right now that is the fastest that I can possibly achieve, which is upsetting when you know both your camera and your flash system can uh, go a little bit quicker. Keep in mind, I'm doing this with the uh, P2400 and you could probably achieve this with lights like the QT 1200 version 2 or the actually that's a great idea for this video is to find out what we can get out of the other Godox lights. So here's the 8400 Pro. Wow 130 second power it's doing it. Let's try 1 16th. Nah there we go. 130 second power on the 8400 Pro you can get 15 frames per second. That's gonna be true of the 8600 Pro as well because it has almost an identical recycle curve to the 8400 Pro. Next up, we got the 8200 Pro. 130 second, no problem. Same thing, 1 16th, no chance, 1 32nd, it holds up just fine, at least for a couple seconds of verse. So as you can see, you don't need a P2400 to take advantage of these 15 frames per second shooting modes. Now, obviously 30 frames per second, that is an elusive feature of the Sony A1, but there's plenty of cameras out there that shoot in the 15 frames per second range. So now you have the information to know which Godox models can actually keep up with that. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you. Leave a like if it was, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.